Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Federer, if as usual, you could raise your hands and we'll take English questions first. Who would like to ask the first question? Yeah. Roger, congratulations. More records broken here at uh, Wimbledon. 17 fourth round appearances, 350 wins at Grand Slams. Moves you to the top of those lists. <laughs> How do you feel about those records and what is it going to take for somebody to stop your run because you looked uh, in fine form today? Thank you, yeah, I mean, I mean, the records mean something to me but not everything just because I'm very much aware that not everybody for the last hundred years played all the slams, you know. Uh, it's really only the last 20 years that that's been going on. Uh, Travelling has gotten easier and I'm sure that's what's going to keep happening that from now on most of the players will keep playing so um, yeah so for me I'm very happy how it's going so far um, I thought it was a good match with uh, with Lucas today and uh, of course I hope it's going to take a, a special performance from somebody to stop me and not just a mediocre performance so um, I'm happy that uh, I'm able to raise my level of play um, also there was a great run of games uh, Midway through the second, also after the, uh, winning the first, so I like seeing um, uh, moments like that in a match for me. Roger, uh, uh, a lot of focus in the first week on young players, um, new faces. It seems like the second week, uh, looming large, are the are the familiar names, both on the men's and women's side. Does this sort of speak to the experience? Um, the value of experience in this tournament that, uh, you know, that moving forward now that we're seeing uh, some of the familiar names? I mean, I think the surprises were definitely there in that first day with Stefanos, Stefanos and Sasha and everything, and Dominic. <clears throat> now, uh, I do believe um, it's nice to, um, to have experience on this surface, you know. The problem is it's not like you can... Uh, play a ton of tournaments and just say like I'm going to focus on the grass court season this year. It's, I mean, you can and play three tournaments leading in and then you'll maybe be tired by <laughs> the third match, but it's just not so simple. Um, I lost my first rounds 99, 2000 and then I had a run in 01, lost again first round in 2002, so um, I don't know if it was of, because of lack of experience, but uh, the panic can set in quickly on this surface. Uh, so I don't know if that's got something to do and if age calms the nerves there. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I just think also it's just uh, um, maybe a moment in time. At the same time, we know that how hard it is to beat Novak, how hard it is to beat Rafa here. Um, me as well, I have a great record here. So um, we obviously also have better draws because we're seeded and we're away from the bigger seeds earlier. and. Uh, so our path to the fourth round is definitely not as hard as maybe some of the youngers, younger guys on the tour as well. It seems hot. It seems okay. that um, there was some risk in deciding to do the French Open, things like that, before you come down to Wimbledon. But it seems to me like it's worked out. Um, I know there was a little bit nervous probably when you started it or decided to do it. The clay season? How, yeah, yeah. Yeah, doing all that. Yeah. How, how have you... How do you feel about it and how well it's been because of that? Um, how do I feel? I mean, I feel like um, I was able to come through really good, you know. Um, number one, the first build-up I had on the clay when I started, you know, before even playing tournaments. Didn't know where it's going to take me, but um, in practice I felt really good, actually. And uh, fitness is always good to do. Uh, with Pierre, we know what we're doing. So from that standpoint, that, that was uh, there was no risk involved there. Um, the question was going to be like how we're, I don't know, the groin or the back or all the or the knee for that matter, they're going to hold up throughout the clay court season, you know, because it can be cold, it can be um, wet or slippery, and you can make one bad movement that you haven't seen for years because you've been on the on the hard courts and on the grass. But uh, I was ha very happy um, how I came through there, and uh, I just think for the remainder of the season, I just got to be really, really. Um, um, clever of how I go to go about my off days and uh, if I have an off week that I really try to recover as much as possible because I've played a lot of tennis this year and um, I hope I can keep that up but uh, I have to be aware that uh, you know I've played good amounts of, uh, of matches already. Roger, um, earlier this year you were talking a little bit about 
the uh, young guys and whether it got physically harder to win a Grand Slam under the age of 20. Just wondering with kind of Coco doing so well this week, a bit of a throwback to some of the younger women who've done really well at a young age. Same sort of question, do you think there's physically anything different now that makes it harder for a woman to win a slam at 15? And do you think it's possible for her, you know, she's done really well to go to the second week, but then do you think there's a physical problem that could stop her winning it now? Don't think so. Um, I don't see a reason why um, younger women's players should run into physical issues or not win, um, you know, uh, tournaments young. Um, I think it's possible. Um, she seems developed and she's moving great. I think it's one of her great strengths uh, and her mind, which is not usually the case when you look at younger players. I was terrible at 15. I couldn't be on a court for longer than an hour and a half and I would walk away. So, um, so I think on the men's side, maybe, you know, at 15, it's not possible, I don't think, uh, to go through a slam. At 17 and 18, what Rafa did or Becker did or Borg did, I think it's possible. I do believe the depth is bigger on the men's and on the women's sides. So you need to beat more better player, um, you know, every round. Whereas maybe in the past you would, I don't think the depth was as great, but there were maybe more um, specialists of the surface around, which was maybe making things more complicated, I'm not sure. but. I don't think for Coco or any young uh, girls coming up, uh, the physicality is an issue, I don't think. Um, going back to your careful scheduling, you've just announced doing another match for Africa in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. How difficult, though, is it to fit that into what's still a full timetable, especially when Rafa is involved as well? It took me two years to find a date, but we have it. I was trying to be... Um, as little as possible annoying to the guy as I could have been. But still, I had to <laughs> force the issue at some stage. It's like, Rafa, please give me a date, you know? <laughs> um, because for me, anything's possible. For me, it's a huge priority. It's always one, one thing I wanted to do. I've always wanted to play in South Africa. Um, I've already played tennis because I've barely been on vacation to to South Africa, so for me to uh, play there now, it's a, it's a proper thrill. Uh, of course, we hope to have a big crowd, but my dream has been reached to get um, a match there with Rafa in that country. So um, it's going to be great and uh, can't wait for it to come around. And I'm sure it's going to be very emotional for me. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's not easy, but you know how it is in life when something's a priority you find time. So I'm, I'm happy to go there and uh, obviously we'll take the family. I'm looking forward to do um, also a trip to one of the projects while I'm down there. Love to do a safari as well. You name it, you know, we'll just have to see what I can fit into and what not, depending on the Australian Open as well. On, on Monday you play Matteo Berrettini, who's having a remarkable grass court season. Um, is he perhaps almost as dangerous a challenge as he can face in the middle of the tournament? Possibly, yeah. Uh, I don't know him very well on top of it, so uh, that makes it maybe a bit more tricky as well. Um, uh, I saw him play a little bit in Halle. Saw his run, of course, in Stuttgart too, and now he's backing it up here again. That's not easy to do, you know, especially when you're maybe, you know, sort of newer on the tour. Um, but he's played a bunch of finals now in uh, um, at 250 levels as well, and I always thought that that's the way to go. Start winning those, start going deep in those, and then you gain momentum, and then you start rolling also at the bigger events. And he did exactly that. So um, I almost played him in the Halle finals when he ran into Goffin, who I thought played a great match. So yeah, I'm expecting a a tough one. Um, I hope he has no energy left, you know, after today. But uh, I'm sure he'll recover. He's young, and uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll see a tough match on. Monday, I guess it is. Last two English questions. Roger. How would you describe the hunger that you had to get to the top versus the hunger you've had to sustain being at the top? I think being at the top requires more hunger, you know, because in the beginning, every number higher you can get, it's like, oh my God, you know, like I'm 50, I'm 25, I'm 13. I don't know. It's just so exciting, you know, so it's easy to stay motivated, but to be at the top, it's uh, obviously it's also motivating because you're you can win tournaments, but uh, it's a, to a totally different ball game. So I think the you need both. Um, but I think staying at the top uh, requires a lot of uh, dedication, sacrifice and all that. And 
I've done well, so I'm proud of myself there. Okay, last name, just question. Um, Roger, with your South African heritage, I wanted to ask how aware you are of some of the incredible moments of, of uh, tennis in South Africa, like Mandela building a court on Robben Island and listening to the Borg McEnroe final in prison, or um, Arthur going to Ellis Park and doing an integrated, uh, having an integrated stadium there and building a court in Sweka. Yes, um, you talked about some remarkable people. Um, it's not always been easy, you know, when it comes to, it comes to tennis down in South Africa, but uh, you know, of course, I hope to have an impact, you know, um, as well. I mean, through my foundation, through uh, um, inspiring a new generation of tennis players there as well. I hope I have had a little bit of, it, of an impact as well because of my mom. And I know they show massive amounts of sports uh, in South Africa anyhow, but also uh, tennis in particular. And uh, I think the people like the, the, that sport down there. So, of course, we're looking into what can I do on that trip? Because it should be memorable for me, but especially also for the kids and the people and the fans and everybody. So, uh, um, of course, I'm very inspired by, you know, Arthur Ashe and Nelson Mandela and all the great things they did. I will never achieve what they did. I know that, but uh, I can at least try a little bit. Thanks very much. We'll take questions from the Swiss press. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tu peux nous parler un petit peu du match qu'on avait l'impression d'une toute petite crispation au début. Au début. Tu nous avais dit que ça ne serait pas facile. Um, je trouve que ça a tout de suite bien commencé avec un, un niveau très haut. Um, voilà, il fallait bien trouver les zones dans lesquelles c'était mieux de, de jouer dedans ou servir dedans surtout. Um, et je trouve que C'était extrêmement difficile euh, à la fin de ce premier set. Euh, heureusement, je fais un très bon point euh, à 5 partout, balle de break pour Lucas. Euh, pour défendre, c'était pas simple. Attaquer en revers, c'est pas quelque chose que je fais tous les jours. D'habitude, j'attaque soit avec le service ou soit avec le coup droit, mais en revers, c'est plus rare. Alors, c'était méga important de, de sauver cette situation-là. Et, et après, j'ai vraiment commencé un peu à, à rouler. C'était bien, j'ai vraiment commencé à jouer quelques coups incroyables alors ça m'a beaucoup donné de voilà de confiance aussi derrière euh, mais Lucas il est resté là hein. il a fait son, son match au troisième set c'était pas simple euh, peut-être j'aurais pu retourner de temps en temps un peu mieux au, sur ces deuxièmes mais après il varie aussi avec les, les effets et aussi les, euh, euh, les comment on appelle ça les, les vitesses de balle voilà et, Mais je trouve que vraiment j'ai fait un match très bon. Moi, de mon côté, je suis vraiment très satisfait. Et aussi dans les moments importants, j'étais là. Alors euh, honnêtement, ça m'a fait beaucoup de plaisir de jouer ce match. Roger Bravo, il a, pour le, si on se projette sur les huitièmes de finale, il n'y aura que 5 des 16 premières têtes de série, mmh. ce qui est assez peu. Je voudrais ouais. savoir comment tu l'expliques. Est-ce que ça peut avoir avec... Euh, on s'est posé des questions sur la lenteur des terrains, on en a parlé un peu la première mmh. conférence de presse, est-ce que ça peut avoir un lien J'ai une toute petite question à côté, est-ce que Mohamed Layani a challengé pour toi à un moment donné On n'a pas très bien compris si tu avais challengé ou pas, tu sais, quand tu te rappelles. Non, enfin, alors je... euh, en fait, euh, Lucas il voulait faire le challenge et derrière lui il a trouvé que non, en fait Lucas il a raison, la balle elle est faute. Alors après, il a tout de suite annoncé que c'est moi qui challengeais, mais même moi, je n'avais même pas entendu que lui, il avait changé son call, en fait. Et après, en fait, je dis, mais pourquoi tu te mêles, en fait C'est ta ligne, et surtout après avoir raté, je dis, pour, tu vois, euh, soit tu es sûr ou tu n'es pas sûr. Si tu n'es pas sûr, bah, tu laisses Lucas prendre son challenge, et c'est bon, quoi. Alors, euh, non, en fait, il, il s'est mis de côté. Lui, il pensait que la balle était faute. Voilà, en fait, c'est ça. Euh, après, la question précédente, c'était... Comment t'expliques ça euh, moi, moi, je pense quand même que si tu regardes le classement et si tu compares peut-être certains joueurs du, de, de 20 à 50, peut-être que c'est comme un peu similaire. Tu vois, le mec qui a 45 pourrait être 28, le mec qui a 26 pourrait être 35. Tu vois, je trouve que c'est assez similaire. C'est là, en fait, on voit aussi que. Euh, Presque à partir de 15 et tout ça, vraiment, c'est très équilibré, euh, mais c'est très fort en fait. Alors, euh, moi, je pense que c'est peut-être euh, 
le lien là est, voilà, comme j'ai expliqué, parce qu'il y a plus de jeunes peut-être, on a vu plus de jeunes perdre aussi, peut-être c'est un peu l'expérience sur le gazon qui leur manque encore un peu, et peut-être c'était juste aussi un hasard cette saison, que, cette année, que le gazon à Wimbledon c'était comme il était, et les joueurs ils ont perdu plus tôt que prévu, voilà, je pense que c'est un peu ça. Du hast eine kleine Bilanz zu können, dass er sich der Rasse spielt, dass die noch sehr Theorie, dass es extra verlangt, langsam zu werden, sehr und so. Also, mm, das glaube ich nicht. Ja, okay. Das muss man mit ihm reden. Aber äh, ich habe mit dem Hennen geredet. Also, ich kenne ja gut und er hat gesagt, schau, die machen immer noch genau das Gleiche. Aber äh, von dem her glaube ich schon. Ich habe das Gefühl, oder wie mit dem, wie mit dem Bein. <lacht> Es ist ja nicht jede Saison gleich oder, mit dem Wetter. Weißt? Darum war es vielleicht in dieser Saison leicht ähm, weicher, gewesen, vor allem in der ersten Woche. Es ist überraschend, weil sie doch immer den Ballon aufziehen, zu oben, weißt, aufpumpen mit, mit Luft. Darum können sie es ja eigentlich kontrollieren. Aber trotz allem, oder, ich glaube, wenn sie dann mal die Planer wegziehen, dann tut das doch irgendwo äh, seinen Effekt haben auf, dem, auf den Belag. Ich habe gehört, dass Leis bei 5 cm springt da weniger ab in der Saison als noch letztes Jahr oder in Wimbledon. Ich meine, das ist doch ein, schon noch ein kleiner Unterschied, oder? Also, und ich habe jetzt das Gefühl, vor allem heute, wenn ich auf dem Rangi bin, spiele und jetzt auch auf dem Center komme, ich habe das Gefühl, die Plätze werden ein bisschen härter, oder? Weil sie sind natürlich mehr an der Sonne. Ähm, und sie werden so ein wie, wir trampeln sie auch ein bisschen runter, oder? Und darum habe ich das Gefühl, jetzt wird es härter. Es wird ein bisschen einfacher, um sich zu bewegen von hinten. Durch das durch die Ball springen ein bisschen mehr ab. Automatisch könnte es auch ein bisschen schneller gehen. Ich habe immer noch das Gefühl, so gegen die gegen raus. Wenn du servierst, gehen immer noch nicht super mega ab, oder? Aber es ist okay. Ähm, und ich habe immer gesagt, die, die schwierigsten Matches sind immer die ersten zwei hier, oder? Weil, ja, es ist einfach weich am Anfang, oder? Und darum, ich glaube nicht, dass es ein riesen Unterschied ist, aber ich glaube doch, ähm, es hat sicher so kleine seine Tücke gehabt in dieser Saison, um sich an den, an den, an den Rasenplatz zu gewöhnen. Ja. Kannst du dir erzählen, wie die erste Woche so viel erlebt ist, auch neben dem Platz? Ähm, dreht sich alles um das Training und das Spiel? Oder hast du auch noch eine sonst Zeit gehabt, zum etwas unternehmen? Jetzt, was das Turnier eigentlich angefangen hat, eigentlich nicht viel, ganz ehrlich. Ähm, ich bin jetzt bei mir noch von Halle und von Paris und aber wenig Zeit habe. Ich muss einfach schauen, dass ich auch zur Ruhe komme. Darum, ich habe viel Tennis geschaut. Ähm, ich habe einfach viel auch ein bisschen mehr erholt und ein bisschen relaxed. Einfach mit der Familie und Freunden, die vorbeikommen sind. Ich bin jetzt eigentlich nicht mehr groß in die Stadt gegangen. Ich habe ein paar Mal in der Stadt gesehen, Anfangswoche, für eine Hochzeit und noch dann für, äh, mit der Mannschaft gegessen. Also mit der Labour Cup Mannschaft gegessen, was lässig war. Aber seitdem bin ich eigentlich auch froh, dass ich einfach daheim bin. Sorry, ich habe nicht gesagt, ob ich ein Spiel finde. Oder? Ähm, eigentlich bin ich sehr zufrieden, wenn ich mich vor allem heute gespürt habe, weil ich gewusst habe, das ist der erste richtige Test. Die ersten zwei habe ich gewusst, irgendwo habe ich die natürlich im Griff. Und äh, darum bin ich froh, dass ich jetzt eigentlich das Level auch erreichen kann. Und das lässt mich eigentlich hoffen, dass ich besser kann spielen kann. Aber äh, nein, ich bin ähm, entspannt. Das Wetter ist ja schön. Oder? Von dem her sind wir auch ein in im Garten und draußen, was eigentlich relaxed ist. Uh, Roger, pour Lucas, c'était sa première fois sur le cours central. Ok. Est-ce que toi, je pense que c'était contre Pete Sampras en 2001. Mm. Est-ce que tu te souviens un peu de comment tu te sentais avant, avant de pénétrer mm. sur le cours Est-ce qu'il y avait de la tension Est-ce que peut-être tu, tu pensais à l'histoire de ce cours Je me souviens euh, de pas trop de choses, sauf euh, le chemin de marcher vers le cours central. Euh, Et après, sur le cours central, le moment de, pas de peur, mais de, de sensation que, aïe, 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 c'est sérieux ici, tu vois. Et j'avais les mains méga froides et quand j'ai frappé la balle et je suivais la balle et je voyais que Sampras me renvoyait la balle, je dis, c'est juste incroyable ici, c'est monstrueux. Et voilà, ça, je me souviens. Et forcément, après quelques rallyes, je me souviens. Et forcément, la balle de match, la situation où je m'écroule sur le gazon et... Je ne sais pas comment serrer la main à Sampras, parce que voilà, à l'époque, on serrait encore la main comme ça. Et maintenant, la nouvelle génération, on se donne tous, tous la main un peu en, en pote. Quoi. Euh, mais voilà. Euh, autrement, avant et après, honnêtement, j'ai un peu un blackout. Mais euh, c'était un moment oui, incroyable de pouvoir jouer sur ce cours central. J'espère que Lucas aussi, il prend ça avec lui, en fait, que dans sa carrière, il a joué sur ce central parce qu'il voilà, il est mythique. J'espère qu'il a ressenti les, les mêmes sensations que moi. Last question. Sorry, it's been asked. Okay. One more question. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you.